Welcome to today's training. Now today we're going to look at a few uh, different uh, functions and concepts in Excel. We're going to build a very simple, um, what do we call it, uh, financial model in that we're going to look at different asset allocations uh, across different asset classes and show that allocation um, over a period of different months. Now I've got a, a spreadsheet that I've half developed here. Um, if I just scroll down it, you'll see that there's some assumptions, some calculations, and some outputs. Now, we're going to complete this spreadsheet focusing mainly on using the year month function, the index function, the match function, and implements and error handling. So basically, if we just move down here, you'll see I've got um, six different asset classes. Equities, property, bonds, cash, foreign assets, and additional. Now, each of these columns is a different month and a different time period. Um, the start date of our asset allocation um, time series is the 31st of December 2005. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stick some months in here. Now, we want to make our months dynamic while our dates dynamic so we're going to make our date labels based on the start date assumption so we're going to start with an if function then use something called an is blank which is a logical formula so it returns true or false and what you'll notice in all my financial models or um, the column i is always blank and it's quite good practice to do this it's the it's almost like a holder column. So we're gonna go if is blank our uh, nine. So if the preceding column is blank, then we're gonna go EO month. Select our start date, and we're gonna absolute reference that. And we're gonna go zero months forward. Now for any period after our start date, so we would expect any time series not to have a blank period. Um, a column before it, we're going to go EO month, the prior period state, and we're just going to go one month forward. Press enter, and we get the 31st of December 2005. Now we can copy this form formula across our whole time series, and press Ctrl V, and you'll see now we've got a whole time series of dates one month apart now if we change this for example let's make this the 31st of October you'll see it dynamically updates our time series now here we've got an absolute amount so we've got 100 um, units or 100 rands or dollars of SA equities 150 rands or dollars or whatever your currency is of property that gives and then if you add up all these values you get the 463 now because we're talking asset allocation we want to work out what the percentage um, split is of each, each of these different types of assets so if we just move down to the calculation section you'll see I've got a reference here to J9 which is our date um, for the first time series and so on, so K9 and so on. So for each time period we want to know the percentage in each of the different asset classes. So we're going to use some error handling here because obviously if there's zero assets in total, for example this total where the 463 is, we're going to get an error. So this is where we're going to use some error handling. So we're going to say if error, we're going to go up to our first balance which is the 100 divided by the total which is the 463 so if that's an error then return 0 if not actually do the calculation so we press enter we get 21.6 percent copy that down and you see we get 100 percent which we should do now we can copy these formulae across all time periods. And you see we get 
the total 100% in each one and the asset allocation changes slightly in each time period for each asset. One thing to note here is you'll see I've used a dollar sign in front of the 16 to fix the row for the total. Now obviously because we're trying to work out the proportion of all the assets, we needed to do this. So if we didn't do that, when we copy the formula across the row, it would change. So we move next on to the outputs and this is where we're going to use the index and match functions. So the first thing we want to do is we want to, we've got a part chart here. Now I've got some index functions already here. So I'm actually just going to delete quickly because we will redo them. So you'll see we've now got no data in our charts. And the first thing we're going to do is just say we want to know the fund split at the 30, 31st of January. 2006. So we enter that in there. Now we need to know where in our list of months this 31st of January sits. So we're going to use a match function. So we type in match here, match that date, and I'm just going to fix the column in this time series over here. So that's all our dates, and we're going to use a match type naught, which is an exact match. So we want to know exactly where it sits, and we're going to press enter. And we, here we see it sits in period number two. Now, just as an aside, you'll see that I've used um, some custom number formatting to put in period number, just to give a little bit more detail to the person that's using the model. Now, in these cells over here, we want to return the asset allocation for each of the different asset classes in the 31 Jan 06 time period. So we're going to use the index function, and we go and we go through up to the top there. We're going to select the entire of SA equities, and we're just going to fix the columns. And then our next argument is the column number we want to um, look up. So we're going to fix that as well because that must be the same in every cell, and press enter. We get 21.8%, which is what we expect. Just an aside here, you'll see we've got the array we want to look up, and then it goes row number. Now, we're actually looking up a column here. One of the neat things about Excel is that it's automatically worked out that because there's only one row, 21 and 21, we're actually not looking at rows because we can only look up one row. We're looking at columns. So we can just copy that formula down. So you see every period is indexing the correct um, row and correct column. So you've got different asset allocations for each of our different asset classes. Now if we change the state, so if we go one month forward, so it's changed to 28th of February, you see it updates the period number three and changes the asset allocations automatically. So using an index and match can be quite useful in uh, pulling out um, specific time period financial data. Yeah, we've just looked at asset allocations over various different months for um, various investment portfolio. We've got a pie chart here that shows the splits of different um, asset classes. And over here, we just do a stacked column chart for each of the time periods for the different asset classes. And you should be able to see over the whole time series, the change in weighting of different asset classes. So just to revisit what we've learned here, we've learned how to use the EO month function, the index function, the match function, and implementing some error handling, all um, useful functions and, and concepts whenever you uh, build any uh, sort of financial model. Thanks for watching. Cheers.